Hey, how's everybody doing? Well, I'll tell you, it's been a it's been a hot minute since I I did a Canadian Islander fan uh, podcast. Uh, well over a year now, at least. So, uh, anyway, what I've seen this season has gotten me excited, and I kind of want to jump back into it. One of the reasons I stopped doing my podcast was I was I. You have to understand, I I live on Vancouver Island as West Coast as you can possibly be. And my favorite team is the New York Islanders, as far east on the coast as they could possibly be. So big time difference between uh, here in New York, three hours. So basically the format that I was doing, I was po uh, I was podcasting in between periods and then I would podcast right after for my summary. And then I would do the editing and everything, the uploading and getting getting it off and I, I i had to stay at a strict schedule here because like if i wanted my content to to be competitive at all uh obviously my my viewing audience is mostly going to be from new york so i need to get that content out quick but basically on, on a regular 7 30 game uh i'm looking at getting my content out onto twitter and that by about two or three in the morning. And the problem with doing a game day podcast, unless you become as revered as Steve Dangle has, uh, people will look at one of his a day or two later. But the way I figured it, I got to get it out because it's got to stay hot, especially like if you get a back-to-back -back game, like uh, if you have back-to-back -back nights and all of a sudden I'm putting out a podcast that you're receiving first thing in the morning, uh, say we lost, you don't want to listen to me rant on about how we lost. You're more thinking about the game tonight and moving on. So uh, I found that become very almost like a job. And I'm retired now. Um, I'm air trap controlled, retired. And I, I, I didn't like the feeling that it was becoming a job. But more importantly than that, it was distra uh, distracting from my 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 love for the game of watching Islander games because I, I was working so much in between periods and doing all this stuff. So I was really losing that w love that I had of just pure watching the Islanders. So anyway, with that said, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of maybe just coming back on a different format of just kind of when popping up when I, when I feel like it, I know that's not great for podcasts for content because people rely on a certain, time pumping out x amount of videos but i think that's the way for me to go here and uh is exactly why i'm doing this video i'm uh last season I, i'm going to set this this video up with last season last season entering in uh, preseason ended i was i i had never been so almost disgruntled as an islander fan and was so not looking forward to last year. I just didn't think we had the team and uh, I knew it was going to be a, a rough year. And it was, it was, uh, we made the playoffs, but there was never a stretch ever in that season where we could have just relaxed and said, Oh, this is great. You know, we're going to the playoffs We're we're doing that. We never had a long stretch of good hockey we we were so roller coaster it was unbelievable and if it wasn't for varley uh at the end of the season taking us on a on a hot stretch we would have never made the playoffs so uh, i was really down on that team last year and i was very negative i i still i'm on uh, uh uh islander message boards but i was so negative all year and all my posts and for me that was so frustrating because i like to try to be the positive islander family I, i've never i've never ever turned off a, a a game or left a game in my life ever losing eight nothing i watch till the horn goes it's just it's a it's been a thing with me and now i can't not not do that so uh i'm a true blue fan and i i i just i just love to watch it and whatnot and they were they were not exciting. They were boring. They were discombobulated. They were not very good. They didn't have very much talent, but, and 
all of a sudden this year came along and I, I can't believe the difference a year makes. I am so pumped and so excited about this season from what I've seen in this preseason. This beyond a doubt to me is the best preseason of the New York Islanders that I have ever seen in full. I've only been to one live one and that was the one in Saskatoon, but uh, it's only been what, 10 10, 12, 15 years we've been seeing preseason games and, and getting a lot of stuff on, on preseason and whatnot. So, uh, but for me, this beyond a doubt was like a night and day difference between last year's version of the New York Islanders and this year's version of the New York Islanders. And there's obvious reasons why. Number one starts at the top, Patrick Watt. Love the system this man has implemented and it is just getting better and better with each game. It progressed throughout the season as he took over midseason. We peaked at the end. Uh, we even didn't do bad in the playoffs. We played okay, even though I'm getting sick and tired of losing to Carolina. But definitely, uh, Patrick is is the biggest difference. The the one thing that has absolutely astounded me this this preseason is our gap control. I have never seen our gap control so good. I have never seen us that good at gap control. And we have got six guys that can do it and play it. And they, they let's just, let's be honest here. The Islanders went four and two in the preseason. They were awesome. All six games. Should have been five and one if they hadn't blown the Ranger game. But who cares about the record? The record doesn't really matter. It was how they were playing each game. I do remember one. It was either game three or game four, but uh, they looked really tired. And that was, I knew at that time for that game, they had been getting bag skated by, by Wa, which I was okay for. Hey, sacrifice a, sacrifice a preseason game for the betterment of game 72 down the road when we're going to be in better shape than other teams and whatnot. So I uh, absolutely loved it. I love the whole style of, of the gap control in all three zones of the rink, in the defensive end, in the neutral zone, even in the offensive end. We're doing a fantastic job. Addition and subtraction are two of the biggest reasons why I'm so excited about this team. And it's amazing that just four players can make such a difference. The obvious, the two subtractions are Clutter and Martin. And the one thing I don't want to do, I don't want to bad mouth either guy, but let's be honest, their time is passing by. Now, Matt is probably going to stay on the team uh, on a PTO uh, contract for the entire season, unless we run into a string of injuries that are unbelievable. And then we have LTIR room and we signed Matt to a contract to help us out, finish it off. So just the subtraction of those two players and then bringing in Anthony Duclair and Maxime Tip Siplikov, who I will absolutely be raving about for the rest of this, this podcast. But by taking that two out and bringing those two in, what an amazing difference. The fourth line looks almost dangerous and probably twice as fast as it's looked in the past. Uh, the additions that we have made in the depth department are fantastic. We have picked up the team speed a lot, especially even just from last year alone. Siplikov, well, like I said, I'll rant on, on, on him a little bit later. Like I, this, this is this, to me is, is the steal of the season for, for the Islanders and maybe in, in the NHL. I really think this guy, this guy is something, Oh, I guess I'm going to rant on about him now, but I, I can't help it because I, I've got such a man crush. Like I I've never seen a guy. This guy does absolutely everything good, everything good. And it's, uh, he hits, he four checks, he can skate. He's big. His Board work is fantastic. His hockey IQ is through the roof. His passing ability and eyesight to see what play is going to happen is amazing. He's going to be fantastic on the power play for us. He is solidified now that we have two complete lines. And I can't remember ever in, in 
decades of remembering obviously back in the 80s but we're not going to go that far back but i cannot remember us having this much depth ever especially and down in the bottom six we have a lot of good good people fighting out for those positions and the the best part about it is is they're going to we're going to have two guys in the in the press box that if we lose one of our bottom six, you don't really mind that guy coming in. The way I see things going right now is I see Pierre Engvall starting the season in the press box. And Pierre Engvall can play on the third or fourth line. No problem. I am not the biggest Pierre Engvall fan. I was not the biggest Pierre Engvall fan before we signed him to seven years. However, he has his attributes and he has his moments where he can be good. However, Having a player like that in the press box, to me, is a huge advantage. A huge advantage. We're not even going down to the AHL to bring somebody up. But we got so many other guys like in, the, in these positions for the bottom six. You got Julian Goche. Guy's got wheels to burn. Wheels to burn. He, I have no problem with him being on, on the fourth line. Guy who really stuck out to me during the, uh, the camp, and I don't know if he's going to be sticking around, but was uh, Liam Foody. Wow. Wow. Really, really, really impressive camp. So uh, that's exciting. So you got guys like uh, Engvall and Fashing and Booty and 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 Goche and and even, well, Holstrom's more of a third liner. But once you get down into those fourth liners and, and now you put like Kyle McLean and Casey Sasekas together, their speed is amazing. And if Wally can somehow fit himself into that fourth line. All three of those people can score. They're not great goal scorers, but every one of them can score. I feel a whole lot more confident uh, in getting goals by putting any of all those people that I just listed than putting out Casey, Zeker, or Zeker, Clutter, and, and Martin. And our team speed to me, in preseason, look night and day from what it's la looked like in the last few years. We are no longer a boring team. We're an exciting team. We've got a lot of guys who can put the puck in the net. We've got fantastic goaltending. Our preseason goaltending was amazing. Hogberg was fantastic. Skerrick was 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 awesome. Uh, Barley was was stellar. So. Uh, we have had the luxury of such fantastic goaltending for so long. It, it's unreal. And uh, it feels fantastic to have it because you see teams like the Leafs and that struggling for years and decades. Like look at the Flyers. The Flyers went like decades without being able to get a goaltender. We've just, you know, even, even before we had Ilya and, and uh, Soroki, like we had, we had Halak and Grice and, and we had some good, uh, Leonard and you know we, we've been good in that department for a long time and so there's really no need to talk about goaltending however the one thing I'm super happy about is to see Ilya return uh, the thing I like about Ilya is is he never dwells on the past and I, I completely I'm 100% hoping and expecting that he's going to shake off last season and we're going to see more of the Ilya that we're used to seeing so uh, I have no want to rush him back into play like let him come back when it's time i'm more than if barley needs to play the first five games let him play the first five games i'm fine with that no problems at all so let's talk about our lines so we have a legit first line with declare barzell and horvat and uh you're looking at 25 to 30 at a declare this year and you know what? I, I think all three of those players' limits are up because of who they're playing with. Now, it's not like Anthony DeClaire hasn't played with good players. I've seen him play with Barkov and things like that. So, And it it takes a bit of a talent to be able to play with, with high-end talent like that. There's only special guys can do it, and I see DeClaire as being one of those guys. But I see uh, possibly Barzell and Horvat's numbers both going way up this year like that is a solid first line and then you throw Siplikov on that line in the power play and we got a power play we got a first line then you dig down into the second line you got Brock Nelson Kyle Palmieri who probably 
may have had his best season ever of his career last year and it looked fantastic in in preseason as well so now now we throw out in the second line nelson sipikoff and paul mary at them i'm more than happy with that not the greatest third line in the world but i'll i'll take our third line anytime lee pajot and and holmstrom like these these those guys are muckers and they'll and uh, you know they're not going to get scored on so uh i'm i'm happy with that third line and and i've already been blabbing about the fourth line so you can you can see how happy i am about the the fourth line so overall our depth is so much stronger than it's been in a long 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 time we have a solid solid top six a solid bottom six i always try to curb my enthusiasm with preseason because preseason is preseason and i don't know if the rangers came to play tonight because it sure didn't look like they did but the islanders sure came to play because that's the way they're going to play and under patrick Waugh, wow, that's the way they're going to play the new york rangers played like a team playing their last preseason game that won the the did they win the president's cup last year well they won the at least the eastern conference they, they looked like a team that didn't really care so uh plus they didn't have panarin so who knows but i will say this from what i have seen out of this team this year i expect this to be the year that we don't sweat it out to make the playoffs last year i wasn't even sure we we're going to make the playoffs this year i'm pretty sure we're going to make the playoffs and i think the competition in in the east has went up and yet I think we went way up and I, 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 I could see us as a second place team this year, or somehow wrangling that like we could be good enough. Consistency will be the key, but under Patrick, why I, I'm really super pumped about, about the team going forward. Like everything looks great. The gap control, the system that we're playing, uh, the one, uh, blemish on our record was the Ranger game where we let the big comeback happen but that was exhibition i know people freaked out because they think oh no that's what happened last year well last year was last year and hopefully they'll we'll shut her down this year and in in the way we have to and tonight was a good bounce back showing against the same team the same scenario happening with with the lead that we had and rangers get the power play last game they scored on the power play didn't score on this one stopped it right there and there was no comeback and we poured it on at the end so anyway i just want to say i am super excited as an islander fan this year and i think every islander fan should be excited i don't know i'm not going to say we're a, I, I wouldn't put us up at the top of the stanley cup contenders but i'm telling you i i really believe this is the strongest addition we've put out in a long time if we won the stanley cup would i be surprised if everything went right for this team and they played hard enough, they could do it. And I know that's rose colored glasses coming from an Islander fan, but that's just the way I see it. We have experience. We've got a great coach. We've, we've got a great defense. We've got great goaltending. We now have some pretty damn solid offense. And I don't see any reason why we can't compete with Carolina and the Rangers up there no reason at all and i'm super pumped super excited about it and uh i just can't wait to get the season going so uh i i hope you guys are all as excited as me and uh who knows when i'll put out another video but next time i i feel the yearning i uh, i'll just do it so anyway uh if any of the people who subscribe to my channel are still sticking around and have this pop up it's uh hey how are you doing it's good to see you again uh feeling better uh i like uh the possibilities of this format of just popping on once in a while and and shooting the breeze about the aisles and uh love to get some guests sometime to talk with as well from new york that'd be great but anyway super excited canadian islander fan returns my name's tk you guys all take care out there boys and girls and peace out